This statement is false. Is that sentence true or false? If it's true, then it's false. But if it's false, then it's true. So the statement, this statement is false, is neither false nor true. It's a paradox. Now with sentences, we can just say, it's nonsense. The fact that you can string words together into a grammatically correct sentence doesn't mean the sentence means anything. But what happens if we turn the sentence, this statement is false, into a science experiment? I'm Chris Horst. Let's look into the vortex. Suppose we have a device that lets us send a message back in time. We've tested this device and we know it works. So we want to do an experiment. Five minutes from now, we're going to send a message back in time to one minute from now. If the message we receive is yes, we're going to send no. But if the message we receive is no, we're going to send yes. And if we receive nothing, we're still going to do the experiment and we're going to send a yes. This experiment is a physical equivalent to the statement, this statement is false. And all time travel paradoxes are logically equivalent to this experiment. So what's going to happen? There are three main interpretations in science fiction of how time travel works. The mutable timeline, the immutable timeline, and the parallel timelines. The mutable timeline says that there's one timeline and whatever you've done most recently changes the entire timeline to reflect that. So if you receive a yes, that means in the one timeline, you will have sent a yes to the past. But when you decide to send a no instead, that changes the timeline so that you have received a no in the past. What really happens? Do you send a yes or no, receive a yes or no, or, or what? Well, it doesn't really matter because once you get through that point, then the timeline continues on. We see the mutable timeline in stories like Back to the Future, where Marty goes back in time, prevents his parents from meeting, and then he slowly starts to fade away, and other characters fade away from the family picture. That is, uh, it doesn't work. Because the particles in his body can't just vanish from existence. That breaks conservation of momentum, conservation of energy, conservation of charge, conservation of everything. There is nothing in the particles of the time traveler's body that tells the rest of the universe that they're outside of time, that they're from the future. Any particle that has time traveled is physically identical to every other particle in the universe. So there's no mechanism by which Marty's hand would fade away as it seems less and less likely that his parents are going to get together. So it's fun for storytelling, but there's uh, no science in there. The second interpretation of time travel is the immutable timeline. The idea that there is one timeline, but if you go back to the past, then the universe will have already recorded you being in the past. And you can't do anything that you haven't already done. You wouldn't be able to change anything. So we have rules in science fiction that is, you can go to the past, but you're not allowed to change anything. You're not allowed to touch anything. You're not allowed to make anything significant different. Well, that isn't valid because what's important to humans and what affects the universe are completely different things. Everything you do, just being there, affects the universe. There is no way that you can time travel without affecting something. Because every action of particles affects other particles, which affects other particles, and those effects ripple out through space in a process of entropy increase, and that entropy can't be reversed. Those effects will continue to ripple through all the particles in the universe until the end of time. The very fact that you have time traveled affects everything. So whether you influence an important decision that somebody makes, or you simply sit there and radiate heat from your body, 
those are physically equivalent. Those both change what happens in the past equally. So in the immutable timeline hypothesis, there is one set of events that happens through all of space and time, and that might include someone traveling backward in time, but that person traveling backward in time cannot change anything, cannot make anything different the second time around, because it's not really a second time around. That person is there at that time, at that place, and the fact that they got there by time traveling doesn't make a difference. What does this mean for the yes-no paradox? Well, the number one most fundamental law in physical reality is contradictions cannot exist. So, something would happen. There would be some reason why paradoxes could not happen. Now, it's really hard to see how this could be true given the laws of physics like conservation of momentum, conservation of energy, various divergence laws. It seems like there's nothing preventing you from sending a message back in time that is different from the message that you received. But because contradictions are not allowed in physical reality, there would be some way why it's impossible. The physicist Kip Thorne built up a theory surrounding the immutable timeline time travel idea. And what he came up with was something like a sum over possible histories. Instead of simply allowing anything compatible with the laws of physics, physical reality would trace trajectories through the closed time-like loop and only allow events that didn't cause contradictions. And finally, we have the parallel timelines hypothesis. This interpretation suggests that when you go back in time, the original timeline where you didn't go back in time continues on, and when you go back in time, you end up in a new timeline which diverges from the original timeline and both timelines remain equally real. Now the common conception is that the act of going back in time is what causes the timeline to split. There's actually no justification for that in known science, but there is justification for it to appear that way by branching at other times. The many worlds interpretation of quantum physics. Now I'm not going to go into detail on quantum physics right now. Maybe we'll do episodes on that in the future sometime. For now, if you're interested, I have a two-part explanation of quantum physics on my blog, which I'll link to in the description. It starts at field theory and builds up an intuition from there. What's relevant for today is that particles have a probability of being one thing or another. And in the many worlds interpretation, both are true, and there's a divergence in a timeline. It's not due to choices. That is a trope from science fiction that everybody just copies everyone else. There's no basis for it in science. The many worlds of quantum physics do not come from choices. They come from particles doing one thing or another. So in most cases, the differences between universes is not Hitler won World War II or other things that are important for humans. It's that this molecule is over here instead. But it does open the door to a splitting timelines interpretation of backward time travel. Here's how. In the yes-no paradox experiment, the universe splits before you receive the yes or the no. And in one branch of the split, you receive the yes, and in the other branch of the split, you receive the no. So, in both timelines, you send back in time the opposite message. When the yes goes back in time, it tries to interact with the entire universe at that time, which means it tries to interact with both timelines, but it can only interact with the timeline where you received a yes. Similarly, the no goes back in time and tries to interact with both branches of the timeline. But because of non-contradiction, it can only interact where there was a measurement of a no. And so we have a crisscrossing temporal loop, resolving the yes-no paradox. And those are the three major families of backward time travel paradox interpretation. The mutable timeline hypothesis, which says if you change something, it changes the entire timeline to reflect what you did. We have the immutable timeline hypothesis, 
which says there is one set of events in all of space-time, and it doesn't matter whether you're going forward or backward in time, there's just one set of events, and that can't be changed. This is compatible with known science, assuming that the many worlds hypothesis is incorrect and there is just one timeline. And finally, the splitting timeline hypothesis, which requires the many worlds interpretation of quantum physics to be true, in which the universe is constantly splitting into multiple timelines, and when you travel back in time, you only interact with timelines where you travel back in time. In part three, we'll look at the uses and consequences of backwards time travel and examine what happens when the courses of events are taken to their ultimate logical conclusion. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments. Give it a like, subscribe to the channel for more glimpses into the vortex, and I will see you next time.